For those who don't know me, my name is Scott Reynolds and I am the Adobe User Group Manager for Hartford Flash. And today we have a treat for you. One of our members, Kyle Miller, will be talking about designing games with Flash. Now he has a lot of experience with this topic. He has been doing this for nearly 30 years. He has published at least 50 products and he has worked with um, Warner Brothers, Hasbro, Cartoon Network, and uh, others. Uh, my name is Kyle Miller and uh, I am a professional game designer. I've been making games for a long time and even longer than that I have been uh, just an aficionado of games. I'm, I'm a game geek. Um, just to give you an idea of how much of a game geek I am, imagine this room stacked floor to ceiling with games board games. I don't have that many games. But I've been to someone's house that does. And the craziest thing about it is, is when I stepped into that room and I saw all those games, I thought, yeah, that's good. <laughs> it, it, did, it did not phase me. It's like, yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the, the, the correct number of games. But tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, making games of Flash. What is a game? Because if we're going to make a game, it might be a good idea to understand what the heck we're making. We all know that games are things we play with, but we also play with toys. What separates the games from the toys? A toy is something you can play with. There are no restrictions. The, the first thing that you need with a game are rules. And why do we have rules? Because rules make the game more challenging. And the game is something that we use to challenge ourselves. It's not passive like a book or a movie, where, where if you watch a TV show or read a book, it's just passive. But a game requires active participation from you. And if it's a good game, you're going to have sort of a, an emotional stake in what's going on. Really, before you even open up Flash, it's really helpful to have a good idea of what's going to happen. So, uh, is your game going to be, oh, I don't know, is it going to be a tic-tac-toe game? So if you're going to have a tic-tac-toe game, you're going to figure out, are we just going to use X's and O's, or are we going to use something more interesting? Are we going to use, uh, say, hearts and spades, or, or whatever? This is what I call my game engine. The, 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 this is the foundation. This is, you're thinking of the one thing that your game's going to do and you better do it well. So, for instance, before I made my little zombie game, I did a test. And uh, obviously, that character is very unzombie like. But what I did was I wanted to test to make sure that I could make it work. Uh, so, let's see, control enter, let's see if it works. So, there we go. We got our little guy walking. He's walking the dog. I can speed it up, or I can slow it down. There we go. The whole thing was just take some very simple graphics just to test my proof of concept, just to make sure that things are working. Once I was happy with the way things were working, or if I, this is where you're going to find out if, you know what, yeah, it works, but it's boring as hell. <laughs> or, or you may say, oh yeah, this is perfect. You know, I can make, uh, I can make 30 different levels out of this. But the, the point is, is that you want, to, uh, you want to make sure this thing works the first time around. So once you're, you're happy with your basic framework, uh, then comes the point where you're filling in the details. And uh, so I know that my, my walking dog works. Now we need to make the, we need to add colors. We need to make uh, the walking dog animate. We need to make the walker animate. We need to make all that work. And see, that looks a lot different. Let's go take a look at the dog animation here. The dog has three states. We have his walking state. We have his stop and sniff state. And then we have his, uh, I've run away and I'm taking the guy's arm with me. So uh, three different states. All I need to do is point to either frame one, two or three, depending on what I need uh, 
what, what I need the, the dog to do at that time. Again, the bookends are your intro screen, your, your instructions, um, and your game over screen. So if we go back and take a look at the, uh, the game again, we have our start button. Then when the person pushes the start button, then it takes them to the next screen, which is the instructions. So the instructions say you use the arrow keys to make the zombie go forward and backwards. And it also says that you want to keep the dog close to your zombie because if it gets to into the red zone, then the dog runs away and you lose the game. And once you've absorbed all that, then you push click to begin. That takes you to the game itself. And then finally, after you've lost the game, we have the game over, which actually shows your score and gives you the option to play again. One thing I want to, keep, uh, I want to point out is that I've kept language to a minimum. Anywhere that I could show people what to do with just pictures, I've done so. The reason is a lot of my games are very popular in places where they don't speak English. And rather than try and learn their language, I'm trying to make my games as, as easy to understand for people who don't want to read. You can put it on a website uh, upload your flash game to a website called, uh, well, one that I use is called Mochi Media, and they will distribute the game for you. And uh, what Mochi Media does is that they have an API that you put into your game uh, that generates uh, ad revenue, uh, uh, gets a few pennies for you, gets a lot more pennies for Mochi Media, but the advantage is that. Uh, um, Lots of people around the world go to Multimedia. They'll take your game and they'll and and they'll put it on their website. And uh, so the more places that your game is out there, the more people are seeing it, the more people are seeing the ads, and the more pennies trickle into your pocket. I like to use Flash because everything you need is in the package. It's, it's, it, there's there's graphics tools, there's uh, programming tools. And after you're all said and done, the thing will actually put the thing on the internet for you, and uh, people can enjoy it right away. So uh, it's uh, it, it's the closest thing that we've got to uh, a one-man band when it comes to uh, designing uh, uh, entertainment. For me, depending on the game, it can take me as short as one week. Uh, uh, some games take me four weeks or more. Uh, on average, uh, uh, compare that to when I was working for a major video game company where the average game took about a year to develop uh, and required lots and lots of people. Uh, 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 usually at least uh, the smallest team I worked with had, uh, I think was like maybe six or seven people. I mean, we had programmers, we had artists, we had we we contracted out for animation. I mean, it, it was a it was a big deal. Uh, now it's just me, myself, and I, and uh, whatever I can find on the internet, and that's how I make my game. I'm currently using ActionScript three. ActionScript three is uh, uh, just a uh, it, it's got a little bit more under the hood uh, to do what needs to be done, so uh, I'm, I'm really forcing myself to, to, to make friends with ActionScript 3, and uh, we're, we're slowly coming together. It really depends on whatever is convenient at the time. Uh, sometimes I'll use Photoshop, sometimes I'll just go ahead and do it in Flash, sometimes I'll do it in Illustrator. Uh, it's just whatever is the right tool for the job. You're saying you could have just as easily, in Photoshop, made a uh, an animated um, bitmap. Yes. And then put the, use that in your, instead. Yeah. Uh, the reason I didn't is I don't like Photoshop's animation tools. It just seems that using uh, the vector art in Flash makes it a lot easier with the transparent and the backgrounds and that kind of stuff. Uh, as I said before, I am more of a a developer and a designer than a programmer, um, and uh, I love to be more of a programmer than a designer, but uh, I don't know if that's ever going to be the case. But I do love making my Flash games, and I uh, hope you enjoyed hearing me talk about making Flash games. Yeah, that was great. Yeah.